Today on Sea Rescue. A pod of more than 20 pilot whales mysteriously strand themselves on Florida's beaches, leaving only a few survivors. Here we go, here we go. Rescuers race to the scene, but will their efforts be enough to save the desperate few still clinging to life? And then, a dolphin calf is tangled up in a mass of potentially deadly fishing line, its frantic mother refusing to leave its side. Will rescuers reach the pair in time to save the fragile baby? I'm Sam Champion, and we're on a sea rescue. It's one of the largest pilot whale strandings in Florida in nearly a decade. A pod of 23 whales mysteriously beach along 10 miles of coastline. It looks like a hopeless scene, but what emerges is the amazing story of one brave survivor crippled from the event and the rescuers who try to save her life, all while trying to solve the mystery of mass whale strandings. A hundred miles southwest of Miami is Cudjo Key. Here, a pod of more than 20 pilot whales is found stranded in shallow waters along 10 miles of shoreline. It's the largest pilot whale stranding in the Keys in years. Shortfin pilot whales are actually one of the largest members of the dolphin family. They're known for incredibly strong social ties in their pod, which is why some believe that when they're stranded, it's commonly in groups. We got a call from National Marine Fisheries that there was a mass stranding of pilot whales down in the Keys. And we put a crew on the road and sent them with the critical gear needed down to the Keys to start assisting. This is something that we take very seriously because we're looking at not just why one particular animal, but what's going on in the area around that's causing these animals to do that. SeaWorld is best known as a theme park, but in the last four decades, they've rescued over 20,000 marine animals, providing invaluable support in situations like this. We have a lot of resources that we can bring to bear in the face of these strandings, diagnostic capabilities that some of our colleagues don't have, and we have uh, uh, something we're very proud of, which is a mobile diagnostic laboratory. Inside this mobile lab are many of the tools SeaWorld uses to care for injured animals, adapted to be on the go. For the eight-hour drive from SeaWorld Orlando to the Lower Keys, Dr. Christopher Dold is briefed on the phone by the dedicated rescue groups and government agencies already on the scene. What we learned right away is that most of those animals, unfortunately, had expired already. We had seven pilot whales that were in a state of stable health, certainly severely affected from the stranding. And the folks we were working with were already engaged in the triage process to try to make decisions as quickly as we could for those pilot whales. The weakened whales are moved to a temporary seaside pen where volunteers from the Marine Mammal Conservancy begin immediate triage. Remember, they're big animals, two, 3,000 pounds, an adult pilot whale. When they're out of the water, there's compression injury just from gravity and their body weight essentially pushing down on their lungs. They're gonna start drying out. They're gonna get sunburned. Um, you're gonna deal with all sorts of secondary problems that the quicker you can help them, the better. As the rescuers attend to the whales in the makeshift pen, what happens next is encouraging. with seven pilot whales next to each other. You would have one animal make a vocalization and then all six additional animals would, would copy that same vocalization. We always take vocalizations as a good sign, that the animals are making noise. It's a sign that they're aware of their environment. And for us, it was a good indicator that these animals were stable and alert as we began their rehab process. In fact, rescuers determined that two of the whales are in good enough shape to return to the ocean. They come in about another six inches. Okay, you're good. Let's drop it. Coming down. So the release process, once the decision was made, uh, began in earnest. Time is of the essence. In this particular case, we were able to apply satellite tags. 
And the two animals were taken out into deep water off the shelf and they were released out into the ocean. One animal went in, it didn't swim away right away, it sort of waited there. The second animal went in and as soon as they were both in the water together, they took off. Here we go, here we go, animal in the water. For the situation we were in, this was one of the really big highlights of the day. Remember, almost 20 of these animals had stranded and died, so here you had two animals that were stable enough to swim off and be released. Coming up, for the last surviving pilot whales, a mountain of challenges remains, including a severe spinal injury with potentially deadly consequences. And then, an invisible killer threatens a mother and calf dolphin. It's up to rescuers to save the animals from a dangerous situation.